morning everybody and thank you for being present today. My name is Lawrence Honor and I am the clinical educator here at Calaiser Australia. Calaiser is a company specialized in medical laser and today we will focus on the clinical applications of the Blue Derma model, which are mainly benign skin lesions. But first, a quick review about lasers and how they work. A laser emits photons that are absorbed or reflected by matter. In a living organism, photons are absorbed by what we call chromophores. The melanin pigment is one of the chromophores, which explains the importance of establishing the skin type of your patients before any laser treatment. When lasers target age spot or lentigo, the photons are absorbed by melanin pigments. The photons generate heat locally and trap them. They become visible in the shape of small dark spot called macrocasting. In the following days, edge spots treated with lasers become darker and the macrocasting shade away in the following two to three weeks. The hemoglobin pigment in blood vessel is another common chromophore targeted with lasers. Superficial vascular lesions such as rosacea, telangiectasia, and angiomas respond well with laser. The blood vessel absorb the photons. The local heat generated by the laser coagulate the blood vessels and shut them down. Later on, the body will metabolize the debris and remove them. The water chromophore is used for surgical lasers. The Calaiser Blue Derma is an exception. It is ablative without targeting water, but we will see that later. When lasers target water, the heat is absorbed by the water molecule and vaporize them. This vaporization expands like a tiny explosion. It is very efficient to destroy cells and burn tissue, but it also leaves a lot of thermal damage in the surrounding tissues, which means inflammation and pain for the patient. It is also worth mentioning the laser treatment for toe fungus. The fungus leaves a pigment, which becomes the chromophore that lasers target through selective photothermolysis. The heat kills the fungus in the infected cells without burning the healthy tissue around. The other cellular chromophore used for pain management in laser therapy and wound with healing lights are the cytochrome C oxidase in mitochondria and cellular calcium channels. The medical terminology for those cellular reactions are called photobiomodulation. Okay, so please bear with me just another couple of minutes with the laser theory, then I promise it will become more practical. As you are now aware that lasers target chromophores, you just need to understand that the coefficient of absorption of these chromophores varies according to various wavelengths. It means the wavelengths of the laser will give you its clinical application and how efficient it can be. So what are the wavelengths of Calaiser Blue Derma? There are three of them, the 445, 660 and 970 nanometers. The 445 wavelength is the main one. It is a blue light with many specificities. First, note on the graph that the coefficient of absorption of the 445 is very high for melanin and hemoglobin. It means it will easily treat lentigo, edge spots, and superficial vascular lesions. For this application, you can expect excellent clinical results. But one of the specificity of the 445 is that it is not absorbed by water. Still, it is ablative and you can treat skin tags and other benign molds. So how is it possible to do surgery with the blue laser? Well, it is because of the energy level of photons. In infrared, the photons are much lower in energy whereas blue photons contain, contain much more energy. Remember, 445 is highly absorbed by hemoglobin. 
So when they are absorbed by capillaries, they generate a photothermal and photochemical reaction. The photothermal reaction refers to the direct heat from the hemoglobin, leading to indirect heat of the blood vessel and indirect cell vaporization. The photochemical effect refers to the transfer of the high energy of the blue photon to the hemoglobin pigment into an excited state. This excited state participates in two chemical reactions such as bond breaking, cross-linking and radical formation. These reactions lead to the photodestruction of the hemoglobin and cells around without significant thermal damage. The blue laser allows high precision of surgery and a better control of inflammation around the surgical site. For the patient, less inflammation means shorter recovery time, less risk of scar, less risk of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and a better control of the clinical results. Okay, so back to the wavelengths of the Kaleiser Blue Derma. There are two other wavelengths which complement the clinical effect of the blue wavelengths. The 660 is the red light. It is used as the aiming beam. The 970 is an infrared light. It is used as a boost during surgeries. The blue wavelengths can be used alone uh, for surgery or if you have very thick lesions, you can add 970 to boost the ablative effect. But be careful, with the 970, more thermal damage will be generated. Not as well that at low power, both red and infrared wavelengths are used for therapeutic application, the photobiomodulation effect. It is known in dermatology as healing light for active acne, wounds, and edema post-surgery. It is also known as low-level laser therapy or high-intensity laser therapy for pain management. So to summarize, um, the clinical application of the blue derma that we will now review in details. They are first um, the vascular lesions. So telangiectasia, rosacea, angioma, venous lake, Second, the big nine pigmented lesions like age spots, lentigo, on hands, arm, legs, décolletage. Third, and the benign raised lesion that you can treat because the laser is ablative. Intags, seborrheic keratosis, dermal nevus, fibroma, condyloma, and even warts. We should also mention the, the antiseptic effect of the blue laser. It is now well known and makes it even more efficient on warts, but also on acne and rosacea where bacteria are involved. The treatment of toe fungus, onychomycosis, is another application of the blue derma laser. Finally, all the application of laser therapy that we mentioned earlier, from superficial wounds to deeper inflamed tissue like muscle, tendons and joints. All right, so now I will show you clinical cases and we can discuss the results, the skin types, possible risk, complication, and um, post-laser care. We will first discuss the surgical application and removal of benign raised lesions. As you can see on the left, this is a thick seborrheic keratosis. The middle picture show you how the skin looks like just after the laser session. Then the bottom picture shows you three weeks later when it is healed. With the Kaleiser Blue Derma, the risk of scar is low and the precision is very high, so you can treat in the scalp and eyebrow area. Remember that hair follicles are in the dermal layer whereas you treat superficially in the epidermis layer usually. So most of the time hairs are growing back after the laser treatment. This is a short video of a seborrheic keratosis. As you can see, you laser the surface of the lesion to gently burn it. Then you rub it off with a cotton bud or a swab. This SK was very soft 
um, but some lesions can be much thicker so you may need to repeat um, the laser and continue rubbing layer by layer until the whole lesion is gone. This video is another great example. It is a congenital nevus in the eyebrow. It takes a few minutes to treat it with the laser and to remove it. The practitioner holds the handpiece like a pencil, so it gives you a very good precision and control over the direction of the laser beam and its depth. Just after the laser session, pay attention to the surgical site. There is no sign of redness or inflammation around the lesion. Less inflammation means not painful after the treatment. In fact, Many patients report that after the laser, it feels like nothing happened and they have no pain. So usually there is no burning or feeling and you don't need to cool down the area with cold swab. After a few days, a small crust will appear. If the patient pick at it, it could lead to scarring like any type of wound. Maybe add a small band A if you worry about clothes rubbing the area. The risk of infection is quite low because the blue light is antiseptic. Many people ask if the treatment is painful. Yes, it can be, but only when the laser is in action. For example, here a skin tag. Count how many seconds of treatment. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten seconds. And by the way, look at the skin underneath now. No inflammation again. You can only expect a beautiful healing from that. So, ten second treatment. Is it really worth the time of application of a topical or the cost of a local anesthesia? Not really. Now let's look at a different treatments. A dermal fibroma on the neck. The full procedure takes two minutes. There is no stops or barely. So yes, local anesthesia would be highly recommended in, in this practice. The practitioner here is experienced and confident. He does not rub layer by layer. He is fast and stops just before the surface um, to remove the debris. And again, you can see the skin underneath, just with minimal um, inflammation. Now, this same procedure could have been done without anesthesia in 5 to 10 minutes instead of 2, because you need to be slower. The mole in the eyebrow previously shown was done without a local. Let's have a look. As you can see, the laser shoot few seconds then stop change direction shoot and stop so it is possible to treat without anesthesia it is a matter of preference and cost for the patient and for the practitioner as well you are the one who decide the protocol in your clinic another common question is about the skin type so yes you can treat all skin types but with darker skin types, you are more at risk to develop post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or have discoloration of the skin. If you discuss with your patient, ask them about their skin reaction when they have a wound. How long does it last before the skin color comes back to normal? It will give you a good indication of the risk of hyperpigmentation for this patient. Often patients agree with the risk of hyperpigmentation because it is still better for them to, to have hyper or hypo, hyper or hyperpigmentation rather than a large mole. A discoloration can be camouflaged with makeup, not a mole. It is more about patient management and discussing about their expectation before the procedures um, so they can take an informed decision. Here a few more clinical cases. This was a very large SK. We can see still a few lesions a month later and it will require a second session to perfect it. Another SK a month after the treatment. Hydroadenoma. 
one month after the laser treatment. Here two moles on the chin and above the lip, three months later. You have seen this one before in the eyebrow. A papilloma on the neck. Many lesions removed are on the face, but be aware you can remove them anywhere on the body. And if you ask your patients, you will see that many of them have some lesions annoying them where the clothes are rubbing. I will just mention as well that warts are slightly different because you need to treat deeper to close the blood supply that nourishes the, the, the warts. So you, you, you go deeper in the dermal section. So first, the doctor will shave with a scalpel blade the warts as flat as possible before using the laser. As you can see, post laser of such a surgery, there will be some remaining heat and discomfort. Um, the management of wart is more demanding than simple skin tags and superficial mole. It's more like a wound, um, wound management. This is the treatment of several foot warts. Usually one treatment is enough, but if a month later the wart is still there, it is usually not as deep and or as large as before the first treatment. So the second uh, laser treatment is easier and less invasive. We can now look at the vascular lesions. I will separate the vascular raised lesions like angiomas and venous lake from the small capillary lesions such as rosacea and telangiectasia. Let's start with the facial telangiectasia. The treatment barely tickles, so no need for local anesthesia or cooling system during the procedure. With telangiectasia, capillaries targeted are located below the melanin pigment layer. So with skin type 1, 2 and 3, the laser will reach the capillaries and treat them efficiently. With the skin type 4, 5, 6, the laser will be absorbed by the melanin pigment layer and burn the skin before it reaches the, the blood vessel. So only fair skin types can be treated for telangiectasias. Again, they are very easy to treat. Hold the handpiece like a pencil and follow the blood vessel with the laser. As you can see, the blood vessel disappear as you treat them. The patient can see the result right away from the first session. After 10 to 15 minutes treatment, you can see mild redness that can remain for, for 15 minutes to two hours. This, this mild inflammation hides smaller blood vessel so it is better to stop and review the patient a month later to treat the remaining lesions. It usually takes one to three sessions in average, depending on the amount of lesions present. This is a very efficient treatment, but it can take some time to treat all the telangiectasia and rosacea correctly. Post treatment, just the usual moisturizer is, um, is needed and sunblock as usual. Ruby angioma and venous lakes are different. For example, when you look at this venous lake picture, you understand that the quantity of melanin pigment on the skin does not matter because the aim of the treatment is to burn the lesions anyway. So you can treat any skin types. You can see in the middle picture here, a pinpoint lesion, like a little hole. It is just after the laser treatment. It bleeds a little bit during the procedure, but the laser coagulates the blood vessel very quickly. This procedure is painful and requires local anesthesia. Then it takes about three to four weeks to heal, as you can see on the third picture. On this video, you can see the laser treatment for many tiny angiomas. Um, it can be very quick. Do not expect disappearance of the lesion, like telangiectasias. The laser coagulates the angioma, they become brownish color, and the body will take about a month to process it and remove the lesion. This video here is another example. It is a flat angioma. See how it becomes brownish with a slight frost.
Now let's look at the third main category of clinical application of the CALISER, the edge spots and other benign pigmented lesions. This time the laser targets the melanin pigments. Patients often require treatments of facial lentigo, but you can treat any body part, face, neck, décolletage, hands, arm, legs, back. As you can see, the treatment is not related to the spot size, but it follows the exact contour of the lesion. It is very quick and it tickles a bit. So usually the patient does not require any topical anesthesia. Just after the session, the lesion becomes darker. Some inflammation and a greyish frost are visible. Post laser, apply plenty of moisturizer, avoid any skin irritation and of course the usual sun protection. Let's look at a few cases. This is a typical lentigo. You may notice as well that on the after picture, the skin looks younger, less wrinkly. And it is the case. The laser creates a little bit of skin tightening when treating age spots. So the skin tightening effect is more obvious when you treat multiple lesions in the same area. Is it possible to treat darker skin type? Yes, but with a lot of caution. The skin reacts more easily because of the high concentration of melanin. The settings must be lowered to avoid the risk of burn or hypopigmentation. We do not recommend these treatments with skin types 5 and 6. Another large category of the calaser are the therapeutic application with the photobiomodulation effect. Most practitioners will mainly use the calaser bluderma for the cosmetic and surgical application but it is also a therapeutic laser. I will mention here the most popular ones. The photobiomodulation uses very low power. It is a very safe procedure. Any skin types are eligible safely and there is no downtime, no redness post laser. Cancer and photosensitizing drug are the main contraindications. First, let's talk about uh, light therapy for skin rejuvenation. Remember that K-Laser combines several complementary wavelengths. The blue for antiseptic effect and the infrared wavelengths to promote the fibroblast production and decrease inflammation. So acne and rosacea both have bacteria and inflammation background. So they both benefit well from laser therapy. The patient feels a gentle warmth as the practitioner waves slowly over their face. Please note that the results are not visible right away after the treatment. It is a cumulative effect. The usual treatment is once a week for four to six weeks. Another popular application of photobiomodulation is healing light post-surgery after a skin flap, skin graft or plastic surgery. Remember that photobiomodulation re-triggers local vasodilation. So when you think of a condition where a better tissue oxygenation can help heal faster, then it would benefit from the healing lights. Tissue oxygenation would also greatly help bed sores, diabetic ulcers, non-healing wounds, burns, vasculitis, and many others. The vasodilation effect of laser therapy is also a great help to draw an area with where edema and inflammation are present. Not just post-surgical edema, but also hematoma after an acute trauma. Again, any skin types are eligible and the effect is cumulative. So you would treat twice a week until complete healing. Finally, laser therapy for pain management has also shown great results on musculoskeletal condition with inflammation and pain. Bursitis, tendonitis, arthritis, neck pain, back pain, temporomandibular joint disease, and much more. Laser therapy is great in the hand of a physiotherapist or similar health profession to combine this tool with therapeutic exercise and manual therapy. 
Again, any skin types can be treated and it is cumulative effect. Treat twice a week for three weeks, then reassess the level of pain, the change of pain medication and the level of activity. There are still a lot more to say about laser therapy and their application, but it would take us another hour. So I will move on to laser treatments for onychomycosis. Podiatrists use laser to treat toe fingers quite commonly. The care laser has a specific program to treat onychomycosis. The patient feels heat on the toes during the treatment, so it is not a very comfortable procedure. But the, a the aim is not to burn the nail, just heat it enough to kill the fungus. Of course, the same hygienic routine is required as for any other fungal infection treatment. Topical treatment in between the laser session is a plus, depending on the severity and chronicity of the infection. For severe cases, laser treatment is used at the same time as the oral medication to take it for a shorter period of time. It means the patient is statistically less at risk to develop side effects from the oral medication. There are still more applications to the care laser to discuss, particularly with the fractional handpiece and scars. But I will stop here for today and answer your questions. Thank you.